that's not a gun. It's a lynx, whatever form it chooses to be in. Mike, that's incredibly dangerous. Mike! Ugh! That's not a gun. It's a lynx in whatever form it chooses to be. Hey guys, sorry I didn't see you there, that's a little embarrassing. Have you ever wanted a uh, CQB 50 cal? Well if so, boy do we have a rifle for you. Now before we get into the review, we of course have to thank our sponsors. A big thank you to the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the way to go. We can't thank them enough, go and check them out. We also can't forget to thank Illumined Arms for providing this so we can do this review on it. Big thank you to them. And of course this video sponsored by State of Survival, a survival-themed zombie apocalypse game free to play on both Apple and Google Play. Now in State of Survival, you'll start with a meager little shelter and you need to build that bad boy up until it is able to withstand everything thrown at it. Because as we say, why survive when you can thrive? One thing that I really like about State of Survival is that it has a awesome plot and also heroes. Now, to be clear, those heroes aren't paid for. You can actually earn them through the free-to-play missions. State of Survival also has an awesome plot as well as heroes. Now, these heroes can be earned through the free-to-play story missions. And in addition to that, they each have their own unique backstories and awesome abilities. Now, these heroes will also help you defend your settlement and, of course, will help you out in PvP mode. Use my creator code GRANDSOS and you will get the free hero Rusty and tons of free items to help you level up easier. Now there are of course awesome game mechanics in State of Survival. You have things like economy to work with, research trees, as well as alliances. All these things keep the game fresh. There are tons of things always happening in it. The point is, I know somebody out there is bored sitting in the motor pool. Go and download it. It's free to play. A big thank you to State of Survival for sponsoring this video. Go and check it out with the unique code right below. Ladies, gentlemen, my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, Remington Model 8s. Welcome to the channel. Very interesting rifle right here. So if you want to come in and take a look, this is, for many people, will probably be a, a pretty bizarre rifle. Now, if you're familiar with the Remington Model 8, it's actually a little bit more familiar. And the reason for that is this uses a long recoil operation, a very long recoil operation, especially when it comes to the uh, 50 cal here. So a couple notes about it before we get started. So first things we have to talk about is what is this for? So we do have a 28.7 inch barrel and we do have a very heavy boy right here. This is 25.3 pounds, of course, a little bit more with the EOTech right here, really pushing the weight limits. Uh, we do feed from a five round detachable box mags and you can see this right here. And the one thing uh, that we can note is that the rounds had a tendency to not want to angle correctly. So it was a little finicky sometimes 
when the magazine was loaded all the way to five, where the round would tend to jump under the chamber, we'd have to kind of hammer the round back and then it would feed correctly. Um, I imagine with a little bit of time that might break in because uh, again, we haven't fired a whole lot of rounds on this. We fired about 150 rounds of 50 cal. That was 50 cal, so it, it felt like a lot. In any case, we're gonna do what the Navy loves. We're gonna go tip to butt. So starting here at the very tip of this guy, we, it even says links on there in case you get confused about what it is. So the brake can of course be timed to whatever you might need it to be timed with for the round, for what position you're firing it in. But we do have a nice brake there and that does assist with recoil a lot. We're not gonna talk about recoil quite yet other than to say that the brake is good. A lot, a lot of flash right there. Now if it's a little cold out or you want to store this thing, you can actually push this all the way in and you can lock it. So this is for storage. It also makes it a little bit easier to load the um, links as well. And then once you need it, if you come over here and take a look, this little button right here will release this guy and your gun will be ready for action. Now, if you do need a bipod, you do have a bipod, it is on the side. So once we deploy these legs out right here, what we can do is you can rotate that guy around. You have your bipod deployed, a little bit odd. Once you're done, we have a little button right here on the side. We can release that, we can rotate it around to the side, and then fold these up and out of the way and store our bipod very nicely. Now, moving up from there, we do of course have our sling mount, and then we have several rails right here. So first off, we do have our accessory rail on the side, and I do wanna say that these rails are incredibly stout, and they are certainly able to hold zero with whatever you need them to hold zero with. So we of course have our full accessory rail up here on the top, whether that be for your very long scopes, your night vision, your thermal optics, whatever you may need, or lasers, illuminators, whatever type of work that you are doing. Moving on to the controls. So right here, we do have our safety. This is a simple push pin type safety. And then of course, we have our trigger right here. So what we're gonna do, for the first time on Grand Thumb, I'm pretty sure we've never ghosted a 50 cal trigger. Uh, yeah. Have right. we? Yeah, we haven't. I mean, does the AE, Action Express, count? No, well, no, no, no. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hoist that guy up, make sure that the safety is off. You guys are gonna go ahead and ghost that trigger with me. So, feeling into that, so we hit our first wall right there after about three millimeters of play. And moving past it, we hit mush, mush, a lot of mush, and it releases. I'd like to think of this as, imagine if Glock made a trigger for a 50 cal, um, but they just weren't good at it. It's just, it's not a great trigger there. Let's try that one more time. All right, feeling into that, three millimeters of play. With that mush, gosh, it's a mushy trigger. I would take a Barrett trigger over that any day. And that brings us, of course, to our magazine. So the release for the magazine is right here on the side. You have these nice little feed lips to guide it right in. Pretty simple there. We've already talked about the magazine problems, which brings us to our operating system on this particular weapon. So with the Lynx, when the barrel fires, it actually travels with the bolt for a short amount of time before those two unlock together. And if you look at this high-speed footage that we took, you can see that in action. The long action is not a new system. The Remington Model 8 famously used it. And what's very interesting is in the context of a 50 cal, I really wasn't sure how it would perform, like how the recoil would be. But Micah, when you fired it, how did it feel, man? It was really pleasant, but odd and slow and sluggish <laughs> very weird and just odd is the best way to describe it so for my guys out there who have fired the barrett light 50 or um you know my military guys have a lot of experience on that um when you fire that that barrett it feels a little bit sluggish because obviously there's got there's a lot of recoil spring there's a lot of motion for that to travel and to eject that round uh take that and slow that down by like three times this I'm is a here i pulled the trigger like four times during the, the cycling of the gun. Are, are you saying that you're a speedy shooter? Yes. <laughs> you are, man. But no, 100%, the cycling on this weapon is certainly slow. But the the upside to that is that the recoil is actually incredibly light. So if I were to put like the worst 50 cal recoil with like a bolt action 50, um, I would actually put the recoil on this lower than a Barrett 50. And the Barrett 50 is very, very comfortable to shoot. Now that being said, I would take a Barrett 50 over this. But it is very pleasant to shoot for a 50 cal, and that is something that I can certainly say for it. Very much so a 
How would you describe it, Micah? A gentle push. Yeah, it's like uh, the DMR of this 50 cal sniper world. It's like a, it's like a, a, a lynx came up and playfully pushed you with its paw. <laughs> You're shooting this weapon. Which also brings us to what Micah was talking about. And what is the context for the usage of this weapon? And if you watch the uh, materials put out by the company uh, advertising it, uh, apparently it's CQB with larger Russian men. So this isn't the most accurate 50 cal out there. In fact, uh, in many manuals, I've seen anywhere from 600 to 800 meters. And we could see today when we were shooting at about 1,000, we were kind of at about the point where it wasn't able to make consistent hits with good ammunition. And that's nothing against the rifle. It's just, what is it made for? Because this is, although it looks like the rifle from Halo, is actually a pretty compact 50 cal. So as far as being able to shoulder it, being able to maneuver it through urban structures and get up to a, a vantage point to watch. It would be great for urban type situations or areas where you don't have to fire quite as long because the 50 isn't really a marksman's round. It's not really a sniper's round. It is 100% an anti-material round. So what does that mean? That means your vehicles, your things that are armored, helicopters, I believe was specifically stated in the manual for this guy. The point is you have to understand why it was made in the context and for what it was made for which is that urban work and being an extremely compact 50 or a 12.7 because it works with that ammunition as well if you're an eastern bloc country it does fulfill that role very very well now the thing that i was most worried about with the lynx was a hundred percent going to be my cheek weld because as you can see my cheek weld is just this bent piece of metal right here i was i was super worried micah were you worried at all yeah, it didn't feel like it didn't look appealing to me at all. Yeah, but it's actually pretty comfortable overall. I was um, surprised at how comfortable it was to fire. I was super um, not sure how a 50 would feel recoiling past my cheek, but due to the long action system, very long, it was very pleasant. So I have only good things to say as far as that. Now, we of course do have our dust cover right here. It is the longest dust cover known to mankind. And. As far as loading is concerned, if you're wondering how that looks, we have a couple videos right here. But essentially, you're going to insert the magazine. Once you get that guy in, make sure it's seated. We're going to pull that charging handle back. Now, this is certainly a man maker. You need to definitely have a little bit of strength. The barrel will then go forward. It's a little sluggish. We've been shooting a lot. And you can... Fuck it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Please stand by one moment. So the question is... Is this sexy little Lynx the 50 cal for you? Well, that's a question I can't answer for you. If you get a chance to try one out, try one out. If it fits what you need, give it a go. Now they are a little bit more pricey, around 18K. So as far as 50 cals go, you're certainly gonna be spending a little bit more money. Understand what it's good at, understand what it's not good at, which is shots longer than about 800. And you have a weapon that you might be happy with. Overall, my impressions are, uh, I probably will never own one of these. But here's the thing, guys. As cool as this rifle is, or as bad as it is, uh, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter if you don't get training. Get out there, get training, because uh, if you're trained up in this, I'd 100% take a guy who just shoots this every day and is super, you know, on the nose, ready to work with this thing, rather than somebody um, who just picks it up because it looks cool. Get out there, get training. Tons of great places to get training from. Bear Solutions, Pat McNamara, uh, Haley Strategic, of course, Orion Training Group. Tons of great guys. Get out there. Get that training. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to this particular review. And uh, we got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. I want you Via to... links. Get out in nature and uh, uh, become a lynx, but don't become a furry. <laughs>